Hey guys, welcome back to the stuff. This week I am going to be making a wall clock out of some hardwood. That looks a bit like this. If you like the look of that, stick around. Remember, while this intro is on, drop me a like and subscribe to my channel. As always, we'll be going through the processes, materials, that sort of thing. So let's turn around, get amongst it at the workbench. So for the clock face, I'm going to be using some hardwood. And for that, I've got this piece. Uh, so this is either cherry, could be beach. I got it um, from an off-cut box I bought on eBay. Not really quite sure what it is. But either way, it's not quite big enough for what I want. It's big enough in that direction, but not in that direction. So what I'm going to be doing is taking some strips out of here and whacking in some sapili. So I'm going to put in some like racing stripes or uh, something like that, like you saw me do on my chopping board um, a few weeks ago when I did my 100 subscriber giveaway. Uh, you can go back and watch that if you want. So I'm going to combine sapili with this bit of hardwood to get the width that I want. And I'm going to cut a big circle out of it and put a mechanism on the back. So hopefully that'll be all right. First thing I cut on the table saw was the sapili. Uh, I've decided to go for uh, varying different widths of uh, strip to go in uh, this clock face. So I'm just setting up the uh, table saw to take the strips that I need. With the other piece of hardwood, I am taking about an inch strip off of one edge and then cutting some five mil um, strips off of the remaining largest piece in order to get the fillers that will go in between each of the sapili uh, strips that I just cut. Once I'd cut all the strips, I could then uh, do a little test clamp to make sure that I like the look of both woods together uh, and then get on to gluing. And I'm just using some Type Bond 3 don't necessarily need to use Type 1 3, um, it's, it's got its waterproof qualities, it's the one I use for chopping boards, but obviously this is going to be hung on the wall so it doesn't really need it, so I could have used any old glue, um, but Type 1 3 it is, and then I can just clamp those up in between my parallel clamps. Whilst the clock face was drying, um, I thought I'd make something to denote where the numbers would usually go on the clock. So I'm not putting numbers on this, just some uh, marks so I can tell the time. Uh, and to do that, I'm just cutting some 5mm, uh, a 5mm strip of sapili, and then just cutting some of the, uh, some smaller strips by hand, and I'll stick those on later. Once I've taken the clock face out of the clamps, I just gave the, um, board little clean up with a blunt chisel I used just to get the glue off and then I gave it all a bit of a um, a plane using my planer just because some there were some high spots on some of the sapili where it hadn't uh, glued right so I just took those off um, so it was all level. Once I was happy with the face I could then mark where the center spot is and then using a uh, protractor that I picked up from uh, Wilco in a back to school kit I could mark where all of the hand um, all of the marks would go for the numbers um, marking off every 30 degrees. Because I want the clock to be a circle, I am uh, I need some way to cut that circle. I don't have a bandsaw, so I'm using my router. Um, and in order to cut a circle with a router, I am mounting it to a piece of plywood, uh, which will act as a pivot. Um, and then I can attach that uh, piece of plywood to the center of the clock and run the router round. So, so this is a pretty simple jig. Um, just going to use this for this one application so it doesn't need to last more than this one go uh, and to mark the center point of the pivot i am measuring from the inside edge of the cutting blade because uh, that's going to be the edge of the clock 
once I got the jig made, I just gave it a little test on uh, this board to make sure that uh, the jig would actually make a circle. Once I was happy that I was creating a circle, I could then uh, put my hardwood uh, clock face on the board, clamp it in using a couple of bits of wood and get to cut in with the router, uh, taking small passes so that I don't uh, try and take too much material all in one go and then flipping it over halfway through so that I can get the full depth and then once that's complete I can just move the offcuts and I've got a circle. After I'd cut the, the clock face out I could then go on to give it a bit of a sand making sure that I transferred the marks that I'd marked earlier onto the sides so I could remark them later to put the numbers on. I'm just using uh, sandpaper from AE right up to 240 to get the finish I want. To mount the mechanism to the clock face, I have drilled uh, a hole that will accept the sort of center spigot of the mechanism. And then I'm drawing around the mechanism on the back and using a router to recess or cut out the recess that the mechanism will sit in. And again, just taking a couple of passes, I'm doing this freehand, didn't need to be too neat because no one's gonna see this is against the wall. Um, but in the end, it was pretty close, uh, but was freehand. If you wanna get a really neat finish, you could set yourself up sort of some sort of jig uh, so that your writer doesn't go outside the lines. And with that done, I can then just mount the numbers or the uh, bits of wood that will act as numbers. Um, and I'm just using some mitre fast, which is a type of CA glue or fast acting glue, just so that I don't have to worry about clamps or anything like that. This is not going to be load bearing, so uh, this will be absolutely fine. Um, and I can just put those on all the way around before giving it uh, one final uh, sand with 240 grit sandpaper and just use the chisel to uh, get rid of any of the glue that is uh, spread out from underneath where I've put too much on. To finish the uh, wood, I'm just putting some Danish oil on. I'll go on to put uh, three coats of this on, but essentially it's pour it on, rub it on with a rag, leave it to dry, rinse and repeat. Uh, and then once it's all dry, I can put the mechanism together and put the clock hands on. Uh, this mechanism came from Amazon, came with a number of different hands, and these are the ones I chose. And I'm pretty happy with that. And once it was uh, all connected up, I could just pop it onto the wall. So there we have it. That was a nice and simple uh, wall clock. I think it looks really good. It's going to go really nicely in my newly renovated office. All that's left to do is to uh, grab a beer. And today I've got a Keller Pills by Lost and Grounded. Oh, that's a nice one. Right, you stay safe, get some stuff done.